Hello, I'm Dr. Israel Barkin, um, the medical director of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation. Recently, I was asked by a patient, what's better, chemotherapy or immune therapy? And I learned more details that I would like to add to that post. Apparently, there is a tendency to relate to PSA. The PSA goes up or down then, you know, it may affect the decision what to do. I think in a patient with castration-resistant prostate cancer, once the patient has disease in the bone, metastatic disease in the bone, you cannot ask yourself only what systemic treatment to take, immune therapy or chemotherapy. The first and utmost important question is what are you going to do with the issue of having prostate cancer in the bone? This needs an immediate attention, regardless of the PSA going up or down. This is extremely important because we have new tools. First of all, diagnostically, we could add to the bone scan by using the sodium fluoride PET scan, which is much more sensitive and it's more functional. It could tell us what is the response to treatments. And the other point, there are treatments like alpha radin and XL184, which are available through clinical studies. You could find those clinical trials on clinicaltrials.gov. I think it's extremely important not to be addicted to the PSA and forget that we are not treating the PSA, we are treating a disease, and if you have disease in the bones, then it's extremely important to try to treat it, and also, you don't have to wait when you become castration-resistant situation, then you really need to check the issue of the osteoporosis because any medication that blocks the osteoporosis, stops it, reverses it, is good also for prostate cancer. With the new drug, then Osumab, it is uh, discovered that it's better than the Zometa or the Aridia, and I recommend to look at that too. The other issues of XL184 and the Alpha Radin, if you need more information, please get on askdrbarkin.wordpress.com. You could subscribe to that video blog list so you could get email announcement. So in summary, I think it's very important not to forget the integrity of the bone when it comes to castration-resistant prostate cancer, when it comes to treating the disease, you don't just treat the PSA, you really try to look at imaging and see where is the disease, what's happening to the process itself of the prostate cancer in your body. To avoid any deterioration of your overall condition and to avoid having fracture or pain in the future, even if there is no pain now. The time to act on positive bone scan, I believe, is earlier. You should not wait till you start having significant pain. Let's go now to the article by Dr. Oliver Sartor, Stromal Targeted Therapy for Bony Metastatic Disease. Stromal targeted therapy in bone metastatic prostate cancer promised the liver. This is an article written by Oliver Sartor in the Asian Journal of Andrology. Let's go now and talk about the highlight of this article. Dr. Oliver Sartor, in the article, he writes that given the multiplicity of new agents for castration-resistant prostate cancer, it is now time to define what the optimal therapeutic combination. And we have many drugs that work in the situation of castration resistant, but where do we insert and when do we put the treatment of direct action on the prostate cancer in the bone? It still remains an open question. Dr. Sartor mentioned in his article the palliative effect of the bone-seeking radiopharmaceutical like samarium and strontium that were the predecessors for the alpha radin. There is only limited data to show that there is prolonged survival 
with this mode of treatment, but as you could see in this article, Dr. Sartor brings the information what is different between these old agents and this is newer radiopharmaceutical agent. Dr. Sartor in the past did conduct studies where he combined to show that there is a better effect between the chemo and the samarium together than if given individually, and there is still an open question whether this will be also true with the new type of modalities, new treatments discovered very recently. So what's so unique about the alpha-radin? What's unique about the alpha-radin is the fact that the, there is a very short distance, about 100 micron, which makes the, these radiation parts less toxic to the bone marrow compared to gamma rays or beta particles or previous um, radiation pharmaceuticals. This is a very short distance. It gets quickly out of the body, and it does not affect the bone marrow or any other tissue, but specifically only the cancer cells in the bone. The alpha-radin radioisotope is deposited on the surface of newly formed bone stromal matrix, which is laid down at the interface between the tumor metastasis and the normal skeleton. The evidence of the activity of the alpha-radin, besides showing in the studies that they prolong survival, they also showed that they could measure decline in bone-specific alkaline phosphatase and urine and telopeptide. Both anti-tumor and anti-stromal effects were clearly described after the alpha-radin. By the way, the other name for alpha-radin is designated as radium-223. That's the designation for the alpha-radin. The Kabazi taxel, the second line chemotherapy after taxotil fails, and the abiraterol, both of them were specifically conducted in the patient that were after taxotir. A very important point to note, because when we are going now to talk about the alpha-radin, it said that it was studied predominantly in patients after taxotir, but they were judged unsuitable for additional chemotherapy. Although, he writes in the article, some patients refusing chemotherapy were also eligible, and that opened the door to patients they do not want chemotherapy and also open the door to patients that may not have symptoms yet. Dr. Sartor stresses in the article that given both the unique mechanism of action and relative lack of toxicity of the alpha-radin, he can see that this substance will be an excellent partner in the new area of combination therapy for metastatic disease. Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. Barkin. I hope to hear more questions from you. You could get on Ask Dr. Barkin call-in show every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific time. The number is 1-877-727-3301. You could dial that number at any time and post your question. Take care, stay well, stay informed, and have fun. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Ask Dr. Barkin, a free service of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation, brought to you every Tuesday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We hope you'll visit us next week. If you or someone you know has a question about prostate cancer or any men's health issue, remember to call in before the next show and pre-record your question. Dr. Barkin will answer your question during the next broadcast. Thank you. Live well.